Humanity has made a lot of progress since the first ever space station. Today, China's incredible space station, known as the Tiangong, or the Heavenly Palace, is one of the most advanced out there. But it seems like a lot of folks, especially in the western part of the world, might not fully appreciate how big of a deal it is or might not know too much about it. The Chinese team has really taken the idea of a space station and turned it on its head for today's world. And today, we're going to run through the story of how they did it. This entire adventure is a huge part of what's going on in space right now. Of course, space stations have been zooming around Earth since the early 1970s. But Tiangong is the first one that really looks like it came out of a sci-fi book, instead of the old-school, submarine-like shapes we're used to. Before we start talking about Tiangong, did you know that the first ever space station was a lone module named Salyut, and was sent up in space by the Soviet Union in 1971? And then, in 1973, NASA decided to up their ante with Skylab which they put together using a part of the giant Saturn V moon rocket that was lying around. But then, everything changed in 1986 when the Soviets showed off Mir. The first space station made of multiple parts you could put together. Putting Mir together with its seven sections was a huge task that took more than 10 years even sticking it out through the breakup of the Soviet Union. This massive effort really put Russia in the lead when it comes to coming up with new space station ideas. And then if we compare Tiangong with the modern world, the best example would be the International Space Station, or ISS, which a lot of us have heard about. These days, it's pretty clear that the International Space Station looks a lot like Russia's old Mir space station. With Russia's long history of building multiple space stations, compared to NASA's somewhat less extensive experience in this area, it doesn't seem too far-fetched to think of the ISS as a modern take on Mir. If you trace the design lineage of the Salyut to Skylab, then to Mir, and finally to the ISS, you won't find any leaps in the way they were designed. Actually, Skylab might even be called the looker of the group, and that was something put together 50 years ago. The design ideas passed down from the Soviet era, which you could see in the ISS, are more reminiscent of a submarine than anything you'd call futuristic, like the Starship Enterprise. It's all pretty cramped, with a lot of pipes, wires, and various bits of equipment sticking out all over the place. But when you switch over to looking at China's Tiangong, the difference is night and day. Even though only about two decades separate the ISS and Tiangong, the leaps forward feel like they cover a century. Tiangong now boasts three modules, set up in a T-shape, stretching out to 55 meters long and 39 meters wide, and it orbits around 400 kilometers above the Earth. The main module, called Tianhe, which got off the ground in April 2021, acts as the command hub. Then. In July 2022, they added the Wentian module to give space for the crew's living area, a research lab, and an airlock. In November 2022, the Mengtian module was added to the mix, similar to the Wentian, but focused entirely on research. This quick buildup of a space station is pretty remarkable for its speed and smoothness. For Russia and NASA, getting the ISS to a state where people could actually live it took about two whole years, and when it was a full decade before they could call it completely finished. But, even though it seemed to pop up out of nowhere, the ISS is actually the big finish of the third phase in China's mega-ambitious project 1921, which got rolling back in the 1990s. The project is like China's master plan for exploring space. The very first step of this huge undertaking was to get a rocket and spacecraft ready to carry people. They came up with the Long March 2F rocket and the Shenzhou spacecraft, and both of these had their maiden voyage in 1999. The Long March rockets are named to honor Mao Zedong's famous leadership and the long trek of the People's Red Army, 
while Shenzhou means divine vessel. By 2003, these big leaps in tech had managed to send the first Chinese astronaut into low Earth orbit on Shenzhou 5, kicking off what you would call the second phase of the project. The next phase is all about trying things out and learning a ton. By the time Shenzhou 7 came around, China had managed its very first spacewalk using a spacesuit they made themselves. After hitting this big achievement, they started to send up prototype models that were kind of like mini space stations. This was a big deal because it allowed Chinese astronauts to stay up in space for longer stretches than ever before and get really good at docking the Shenzhou spacecraft. All of this was laying the groundwork for the super ambitious building and quick development of the Tiangong space station. At this time, China also came up with a Tianzhou spacecraft, or heavenly ship, which was a cargo ship that could lug up to 6,500 kilograms of stuff. This ship is designed to be a shot into space by the newer Long March 7 rocket, a more modern choice compared to the Long March 2F rocket, and it took up its first trip in 2016. Right now, we're smack in the middle of the third phase of China's big space mission, which is all about putting together the Tiangong, or Heavenly Palace space station. So why is China so set on having its very own space station? Well, first off, it's just downright cool. I mean, who wouldn't want their very own spot in space? But there's also a bigger picture. It's kind of a comeback to being left out of the International Space Station Club even though the name of the station makes it sound like everyone was invited. Back in 2011, the United States decided that China could not join. This decision was made official with a policy from the Department of Defense Act, passed by the US Congress, which basically said NASA wasn't allowed to spend any money on working with China. The official reasons given for this ban were worries about human rights and keeping national security tight. Most importantly, the United States was worried that China might try to spy on them or steal intellectual property, which isn't a baseless fear given the long history of secret operations between the two countries over the years. The deep-seated mistrust has sparked a lot of suspicion on both sides. In response to these doubts, China decided to take a bold step and build its own space station, leading to the creation of the Tiangong. When you step into Tiangong, the first thing you'll notice is how spacious and airy it feels, especially when you compare it to the more cramped quarters of the ISS. Even though both Tiangong and the ISS modules are both with the same width, around 4.2 meters or 14 feet, Tiangong just feels bigger inside. This difference comes down to a couple of things. For starters, the ISS modules are generally shorter and have more points where they connect to each other, which can make the space feel a bit tight. For example, the Destiny Lab on the ISS, which is a major area for US astronauts, is about 8.4 meters or 28 feet long, while Tiangong's Wentian and Mengtian modules each stretch out to 18 meters or 59 feet. Another reason for the spacious feel is that Tiangong's tech is way ahead, which allows for everything to be packed more neatly. A lot of Tiangong's gear can connect without wires, so you don't see all those cables like in the ISS. Plus, a lot of the station's tech hides away behind sleek white panels when nobody's using it, making the place look a lot more neat and modern. It's not totally clear if they designed it this way more for looks to make things work better or to keep their tech secrets safe from other countries. Either way, it definitely gives the station a fresh, up-to-date vibe. Tiangong's first module made its way into orbit on April 2021, marking a huge step forward in China's adventure into space. The heart of Tiangong, known as Tianhe, or Harmony of Heavens, is an impressive structure weighing 20 tons. It's quite wide, reaching up to 4.2 meters, and packs in everything needed for a space station to work smoothly and house a crew of three. Tianhe is knitted with solar panels for power, systems to keep it moving and in the right orbit, gadgets to support life, 
a robotic arm for grabbing things in space, and sophisticated equipment for docking and airlock operations. Essentially, Tianhe is what keeps the whole thing going. This core module is split into three main parts. On the narrower side, there is a spherical section with multiple docking points. This area has four ports. One is always hooked up to Tianhe. Opposite this multi-docking section, you'll find the main port where the Shenzhou crew vehicle comes in. The two ports in the side are where the station's twin research labs attach, fitting perfectly with the main part of Tianhe. This smart layout is all about getting the most out of the space available, making it possible to do all sorts of scientific work and experiments on Tiangong. There's a port on the bottom of this node that's specially designed for crew swaps, making it easier when one group of three astronauts is taking over from another. At the top, there's a port that isn't for docking. Instead, it's a hatch that astronauts use to go out on spacewalks. Heading towards the smaller end of the module, you'll come across the living area of the crew, complete with personal sleeping spots for each of the three astronauts, as well as must-haves like space toilets. Then, at the wider part of the module, there's a spot set up for work with three stations for experiments right next to the part of the station that controls movement and keeps it in orbit. This section also has a special docking spot waiting for the Tianzhou cargo ship, which will be where the Chinese Space Telescope hooks up down the line. Tianhe is also where you'll find the station's main robotic arm, which is also 10 meters long. It's a bit shorter than the ISS Canada Arm 2, which stretches out to 17 meters. But the Chinese version is just as capable and has room for adding more features in the future. On July 24, 2022, China set up the Wentian Research Lab module, also known as Heavenly Quest, another hefty piece of equipment at 20 tons, using the Long March 5B rocket. This launch was a big deal because it was the first time China's heavy-duty rocket, necessary for getting Tiangong's parts up into orbit 400 kilometers above Earth, was used. The Long March 5B has a bit of a unique and talked-about design, powered by a hydrogen-fueled main engine with four side boosters that burn RP-1 kerosene. This makes Long March 5B the third most powerful rocket in the world right after the Falcon Heavy and the Delta IV Heavy. The way the Long March 5B rocket gets into orbit is pretty unique and has stirred up some debate. When it shoots up through the Earth's atmosphere, which starts at around 100 kilometers up, it drops its four side boosters. But instead of doing what most rockets do, letting go of the whole bottom part at once and having it fall back to Earth, the Long March 5B keeps the main part together. After ditching the side boosters, the main booster keeps on pushing the payload up to where it needs to be before it finally separates. This is a big change for the usual way rockets drop their parts in stages. What this ends up meaning is that a big chunk of the rockets end up staying in space for a bit instead of coming back straight down to Earth. But it's not hanging around up there forever in stable orbit. Instead, over a couple of days, it starts coming back down as if it goes around the Earth until it gets pulled back into the atmosphere. While small satellites often burn up completely when it comes back in, the big pieces of this rocket can make it all the way down to the ground. That's exactly what happened with one of the Long March 5B's boosters, which broke apart over the Indian Ocean and ended up dropping bits and pieces over some of Indonesia's islands. The Wangtian module is like a Swiss army knife for the space station, doing a bunch of things at once. It brings in three extra places for astronauts to sleep, bumping the total number of people the station can hold up to six, and it gives them a lot more room to do all sorts of science experiments. Plus, Wangtian comes with two big solar panels that stretch the station's wingspan to 55 meters. These panels use the latest super-thin, bendy solar cells that open up really wide to catch a lot of sunlight. 
Not only do these solar cells do a great job of turning sunlight into power, but they also add about 70 kilowatts of electricity to keep the station running. This mix of smart ideas and useful features is what makes Tian Gong's setup really stand out. Inside Wang Tian, you'll find four spots set up for research that dives into things like life sciences, biotech, and how changing gravity affects stuff. Towards the slimmer end of the module, there's a special spot for experiments that need to be done outside. Here, you can stick experiment boxes outside of the module to collect data. Astronauts get these outdoor experiments through a special airlock and hatch on Wang Tian, which is also where they'll go out for spacewalks. On top of that, Wang Tian has its own smaller robotic arm, which is 5 meters long, which adds another cool feature to the station. What's really neat about this smaller arm is how it can move across the station's exterior, kind of like a robot caterpillar, hopping from one spot to another. This lets it work from different places all over the station. And if that's not cool enough, this arm can join up with the bigger main arm, making a combined length of 15 meters. This setup can do just about everything the Canada Arm Toque on the ISS can do, matching it in size and what it can pull off. The last key piece of Tian Gong is the Meng Tian, or the Heavenly Dream module which is another lab that was added to the space station on October 2022. Mengtian is a lot like Wengtian in terms of design, but doesn't have sleeping areas for the crew, which means there's more room for research setups. It's got its own airlock too, and doubles as an extra spot for cargo, giving the station a boost in both science and supply handling abilities. Mengtian also sports a big set of solar panels, just like Wangtian, helping make sure that Tian Gong stays super efficient and fully powered with the third module now in the mix. And then there's Chinese Space Telescope that's in the works. We don't have all the details yet, but it is expected to be somewhat like the Hubble Telescope, with a key difference. This new telescope is designed to fly on its own near Tian Gong not stuck in the station. One cool thing about it is that it can dock with Tian Gong when it needs fixing or an upgrade, something you can't do with Hubble and definitely not with a James Webb telescope. China is also thinking big about the future of Tian Gong. At a recent space conference, they shared plans to double the size of the station from the three modules to six. They're looking to send up a new, versatile module soon and are planning to add more large modules to the mix within the next few years. Right now, Tian Gong is getting ready to run a few international science projects, working with the United Nations Space Office and the European Space Agency. This is a great start, even though Tian Gong is still on the smaller side. But don't expect international astronauts, especially from the US, to visit Tian Gong just yet mostly because of the current rules. The wolf adamant, which also keeps Chinese participants out of the ISS, means American astronauts won't be heading to Tiangong either. It's definitely a shame that we don't have any more information on this, as it makes it hard to get the full picture. Hopefully, global politics will chill out eventually, opening the door for more teamwork in space. But with things like the tension over Taiwan in the mix, that kind of cooperation seems a bit far off right now. For similar content, don't forget to check out some of the other videos on your screen.